Hello friends, today we are starting with the ultraviolet rays. Okay, in many literatures it will be written as ultraviolet radiation and it is commonly abbreviated as UVR. So UVR is universal short form, so that may be asked in exam also. So what are this UVR? So UVR, they are the uh, part of the electromagnetic spectrum only that falls between the visible spectrum and X-rays. Now we also know that visible spectrum is of Wibgyor type of classification. Wibgyor means V stands for violet, I stands for indigo, B stands for blue, G stands for green, Y stands for yellow, O stands for orange and R stands for red. Okay, so something about this violet. Okay, violet means Wibgyor, V, okay, V stands for violet. Okay, so something above this violet, it will be known as ultraviolet clear so ultraviolet they are above this visible spectrum now generally the wavelength ranges from approximately 10 nanometer to 400 nanometer for this uvr now actually this ultraviolet radiations they are coming from sun also but they are invisible we cannot see this ultraviolet rays those are coming from sun now this ultraviolet rays, they can cause sunburn or simple tanning. Tanning means the blackening of the skin whenever we are getting exposure to sunlight. So whatever the sunburn or tanning effect occurs, that is because of UVR that is coming from sun. Now, if we compare the energy between this violet rays and visible rays, so definitely the energy provided by this ultraviolet rays will be more as compared to energy provided by visible rays. Now, classification of this UVR is done based on its wavelength. So, there are three. One is UVA, second is UVB and third is UVC. So, what are the uh, ranges for this so UVA ranges from 315 to 400 nanometer UVB ranges from 280 to 350 nanometer and UVC is having wavelength less than 280 nanometer now production of UVR will be by different uh, uh, lamps so first is high pressure mercury vapor lamp second is chromire lamp then fluorescent lamp therakin tunnel and PUA apparatus so the full form is Soral and UVA okay so what are they we are learning in detail so first of all let us learn about this high pressure mercury vapor lamp so you can see the circuit diagram of this high pressure mercury vapor lamp okay so I request you to focus on this figure so that you can understand proper functioning and proper uh, production of UVR so first of all you can see this u-shaped glass tube okay now this glass tube will be filled with argon gas at low temperature in this glass tube only you will be also having small amount of mercury now the tube is sealed at both the ends okay and this burner okay wherever you can see this arrow so that is showing this container or burner so that is made up of quartz tube okay so this quartz will allow the passage of ultraviolet rays and it can withstand very high temperature so with very high temperature also it will not expand much so we can say that it is having low coefficient of expansion now at the ends of this glass tube you can see two electrodes and this electrodes they are covered with metal caps now here AC mains that is the uh, power supply okay so this is mostly given with step up transformer because we need to give a very high voltage okay at approximate 400 volts we are supplying to this okay so at the end of this uh, particular glass tube by this AC circuit. Now when the current enters into this glass tube via this electrode so what will happen there will be ionization of the argon gas that is already inside this glass tube and that will further promote the movement of positive ions as well as electrons so this electrons will be moving towards the positive electrode and the positive ions will be moving towards the negative electrode so this two process of ionization of the argon gas as well as movement of electrons and positive ions okay so there will be collision between these two and that will result into further ionization of neutral argon that is already present inside this glass tube okay so that will give you glow of discharge so that is nothing but our UVR 
ओके जस्ट दिस आयोनाइजेशन ऑफ आर्गन एंड मूवमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड पॉजिटिव आयन्स दे आर नॉट ओनली देर देर आर फर्दर टू मेकेजम्स ऑल्सो दोज विल ऑल्सो प्रमोट दी प्रोडक्शन ऑफ यू वी आर अलॉन्ग विद दिस आयोनाइजेशन ऑफ आर्गन सो वॉट आर दे सो दे आर mercury vaporization and mercury ionization as we know that mercury is also present inside this glass tube so that will start vaporizing okay and ionization will also start in that mercury so along with this three which are these three events argon ionization so argon is already present inside this glass tube so that will be getting ionization because of the flow of current okay then whatever the mercury is there so because of this increased temperature inside this glass tube the mercury starts vaporizing okay and mercury also uh, gets ionization because of this current clear so all this three process uh, argon ionization mercury vaporization and mercury ionization that will lead to production of uvr clear so this is how uvr is produced clear now each and every production technique or each and every lamp uh, responsible for production of uvr will be having some positive side and some negative side so if we are discussing the negative side of high pressure mercury vapor lamp so the negative or we can say side effect is tridimide formation so this side effect we are not talking of side effect to uh, human body okay we are talking of side effect of using this uvr lamp for a prolonged period of time so we know that the glass tube that is uh, making this uh, vapor lamp so that will be made up of quartz and some amount of quartz will be converted into tridiamond so tridiamond it is nothing but one form of silica clear so this quartz will be converted into tridiamond so ultimately it will reduce the production of uvr so it is advisable that uh, we have to replace this tube at every 1000 hours of ultra violet rays production otherwise the efficiency of this production will reduce and unnecessary there will be excessive load on the circuit so this was regarding high pressure mercury vapor lamp now we are discussing the chroma air lamp so what is it so it is nothing but water cooled mercury vapor lamp so you can see in this diagram so you can see the w so w is nothing but it is flow of water you can see the flow of water that is denoted by arrows so the water will be flowing surrounding this production of uvr in between you can read a so that is nothing but argon gas okay so by ionization of this argon gas there will be production of uvr but along with this uvr it will be also emitting some amount of ir so here what is the mechanism that is uh, given so this production of uvr and ir will have to pass from this water clear so ir will be absorbed by water so ultimately what we are doing is whatever the production of uvr and ir that is produced by the lamp inside okay so that will be filtered by this layer of water so ir will be absorbed so that will not be given to patient so what is chromaer's lamp so it is nothing but water cooled mercury vapor lamp which eliminates the danger of burn by absorbing infrared rays okay so now we already uh, see in this figure that this lamp is surrounded by uh, circulating distilled water okay so the function of this uh, circulating distilled water is to absorb ir okay now this lamp chromaer's lamp will be useful to treat the sinuses and deep body cavities now here the direct contact method is also possible by this chromaer lamp because there are less chances of getting burns otherwise uvr is always given with non contact method so there will be some amount of distance between the human body and uvr lamp but for this lamp you can say that direct contact method that is also safe why because there are no chances of burns because this circulating water will absorb the ir okay so that is good part of this chromaer's lamp now coming to fluorescent tubes clear so again what is the use of this tube so whatever the uvr production lamps are available they will be giving long wavelength as well as short wavelength of uvr clear but mostly for clinical practice we need long waves okay without use of short waves clear so initially we think of chromaer's lamp okay so what was the function of it it was absorbing ir so we were getting pure uvr 
okay now again we want to be specific in fluorescent tubes so we are getting uvr but we need only longer wavelength of uvr okay we don't need short wavelength so that will be given by this fluorescent tubes clear so this tubes they will be 120 centimeter long uh, almost okay and they will be also made up of glass only so here only uh, glass will be working in such a way that only long ultraviolet rays will be allowed to pass so this is nothing but one type of the filter mechanism you can say okay now how this filtering will be done so this tube will be coated with special phosphorus clear so this phosphorus will make it possible that only the long waves will be coming outside short waves will not be allowed so in this fluorescent tubes also principal used is uh, ionization only and uh, as we discussed so there will be phosphorus that will absorb all short wavelengths of uh, uvr and at the same time it will be allowing the longer wavelengths of uvr so accurate control on this absorption based on the wavelength will be possible by selecting the appropriate type of phosphorus now therakine tunnel so in this diagram you can see that there are four tubes okay so those are giving uvr to single body so that is nothing but human body now generally the wavelength in this therakine tunnel it is ranging from 280 to 400 nanometer i repeat it ranges from 280 to 400 nanometer in therakine tunnel so what is the use of this so whenever you want to treat whole human body or you can say larger part of the body so you can use this type of the tunnel okay so the larger area of the body can be treated simultaneously with even radiation now coming to pua apparatus so pua the name itself it is telling it uses only uva so p stands for soralan and uva means only the specific type of uvr is used that is uva okay so here what will be the uh, mechanism or what will be the setup so there will be specialized fluorescent tubes which may be mounted in vertical battery on a wall okay or on four sides of box surrounding the patient so you can imagine that the patient is in the center and on four directions of the patient there are four tubes okay and all these four tubes they are giving uh, uva radiation here the treatment will be given after the 2 hours of taking soralan drug so soralan drug it is nothing but one type of the photosensitive drug now coming to physiological effect so physiological effects means what are the changes occurring in our body due to uh, exposure to uvr so they are like this first the uvr is having carcinogenic effect so it will lead to carcinogenesis especially whenever the patient is getting uvb or uvc so what is happening so it will be uh, giving some changes in dna of the uh, human cell and uh, it is also making the cell replication uncontrollable so it is proved that uvr prolonged exposure to uvr may lead to carcinogenesis then erythema formation so because of this uvr there will be histamine release and there will be uh, increased blood supply to the area where we are giving uvr so there will be erythema formation then uh, this uvr dose will be stimulating melanocytes so that will be uh, responsible for melanin production so the skin will get this pigmentation okay so skin will change its structure in such a way that it is getting some thickness okay so that is because of melanin production so melanin production it is also one of the physiological effect now as we discussed because of this melanin production so overall size of the epidermis epidermis means it is Uh, initial layer of skin so that will increase in size so that is nothing but thickening of epidermis now disquamation means if the uvr is not given for two days or even more so whatever the changes had occurred into the skin will be reversed so that process is known as disquamation then this uvr will also increase production of vitamin d inside the skin so you might have heard that whenever we are getting sunlight there will be vitamin d synthesis so that is because of uvr because uh, from sun also we are getting uvr okay and we are getting uvr from lamp also so ultimately both are having same physiological effect so that will be responsible for production of vitamin d 
Now the UVB and UVC especially they have some side effects on eyes so generally it may lead to conjunctivitis or cataract formation. So eyes should be always covered so we should not allow the entry of UVR into eyes. Now the aging process will be accelerated by this UVR okay so it will make few changes in the skin so it will increase the wrinkles okay it will decrease the uh, size of this uh, particular structures of the skin clear and it will make the skin thinner as with repeated exposure clear so all this aging process will be accelerated by this UVR prolonged exposure and UVR will be also having antibiotic effect so the germs few microorganisms cannot tolerate this UVR so if anybody is suffering from infection so over that particular target area especially when the infection is localized so if the UVR is given so it will be having uh, antibiotic type of effect so generally it will be given on wound so as we discussed it is localized area okay where you can focus with IR if the generalized body infection is there it will be difficult to control with this UVR but definitely for localized infection UVR will be good to give result. Okay, so it will kill all this bacteria. So that is known as antibiotic effect of UVR. Now, which are the indications? So where we should give this UVR in which conditions? Okay, so wounds. So definitely uh, where I was studying in government physiotherapy college Ahmedabad. So it was very common practice that uh, we were treating wounds with the UVR and they were giving very good results. Okay, so it was killing all this microorganisms, so it was reducing the chances of infection as well as by promoting iridema. So blood supply was also increased to that local part, so it was promoting healing also to the wounds. Now acne vulgaris, so uh, here by UVR it has been found that uh, it will block the hair follicle and activity of sebaceous gland. So ultimately the condition of acne will also improve. For pressure source also UVR can be given because it will prevent the infection as well as it will promote the growth of the skin surrounding this pressure source. So the pressure source will be healed earlier. Then psoriasis. So psoriasis it is one type of the skin condition where uh, the patient will be having pink or red color patches covered with silver scaly uh, skin. So the psoriasis occurs generally in those countries where the sunlight is poor. So definitely logically also you can say that uh, because of lack of sunlight the UVR is also taken less clear. So by that uh, particular individual if the sunlight is not proper okay in amount so they will develop this psoriasis pink or red color patches with silver skin layer okay. So when the sunlight comes this psoriasis will disappear okay but few countries they are not getting proper sunlight so instead of sunlight you can uh, give this UVR okay so the UVR gives best result into the psoriasis okay alopecia so alopecia means it is a loss of hair prematurely so by giving this UVR also we can promote the hair growth rickets so rickets it is uh, one type of the vitamin D deficiency we can say so as we know that this uh, UVR will be promoting the vitamin D synthesis and this vitamin D is necessary for absorption of this calcium from the intestine clear so by giving UVR what we are doing we are going for synthesis of vitamin D and this vitamin D synthesis will be leading to absorption of calcium and because of this absorption of calcium we will be having proper bone strength clear so for rickets UVR will be helpful then counter irritation so UVR will be uh, sensitizing the superficial tissue so whenever we are having pain coming from the deeper organ so just by stimulating this uh, superficial area especially skin we can give counter irritation so the sensation from this uh, sensitization of the superficial part that is skin that will be uh, reach to the brain so the brain will not be getting pain stimulus from deeper organ clear so it is very simple phenomena 
you are providing sensation especially this type of the counter irritant type of the stimulus from superficial body part so that is nothing but skin clear so brain is getting the stimulus from skin counter irritant type of the stimulus from skin clear so at the same time brain is not getting stimulus from deeper organ because two stimuli they cannot reach the brain simultaneously clear so deeper pain will be forgotten so by this counter irritation we can also think of pain relief then psychological effect so by getting this light type of the treatment okay it is light okay where patient is getting light yeah so it will increase the well-being and it will increase the confidence of patient so that is the effect on psychology of patient now dangers so first on eyes so eyes should always be covered okay with napkin or simple goggles okay so that uvr they are not entering into eyes we have also seen that whenever we are going into sunlight okay especially in noon time so we are wearing goggles why so that the uvr they are not entering into eyes if they are entering into eyes it will lead to Uh, cataract formation or conjunctivitis so eyes should be always protected with either napkin towel or goggles then overdose so many times a uh, patient may be having hypersensitive skin or sometimes the lamp is too close to the body part okay sometimes there is perspiration and because of perspiration the absorption of the uvr is more so by all this cases the overdose may be there and it may lead to burns sometimes okay so that should be taken care that uvr is not causing any type of the burns so we have to avoid this overdose by thinking of all the domains now contraindications so in acute conditions like acute eczema dermatitis or lupus erythematosus or herpes simplex uvr is not given otherwise it will accelerate this infection because of this increased blood supply this infection may spread clear so in acute skin conditions they are not given okay but whenever the skin condition is not acute you can think of giving this uvr hypersensitivity to sunlight if it is there so definitely the patient is also having hypersensitivity to uvr so it is possible that skin will be having adverse reaction by this exposure to uvr then if the patient has already taken deep x ray therapy or cobalt therapy in uh, near past so already they will be having a devitalization of the tissue so definitely this devitalized tissue will not be able to tolerate this uh, dosage of uvr so in case of all this we should avoid giving uvr and in recent skin grafting where the graft is not taken yet or not accepted we should not give uvr once the graft is accepted then it is different now let us make a list of the conditions where we can use this uvr so ulcer so that is nothing but pressure sore or uh, wound then we can use in case of acne vulgaris because we know that it will be blocking the hair follicle and will be blocking the activity of sebaceous gland then for pressure sores so because it is having antibiotic effect as well as it will increase blood supply for proper healing in case of psoriasis so just by dosage of uvr this psoriasis will disappear because it needs uvr only then in case of rickets by promoting vitamin d synthesis we can help in calcium absorption and by uh, this general debilitating condition if we uh, give this uvr so definitely they will be having good psychological effects and they will be having good feeling of strength and confidence then in case of vitiligo we can help the patient by giving this uvr and in case of alopecia where there is premature loss of hair the uvr will be helping that patient for uh, increasing or accelerating the growth of hair now uh, this whole content was taken from this book textbook of electrotherapy jag mohan singh so i'm thankful to the author of this book now one more thing that i would like to discuss here only the theory part is explained so for uh, practical part especially it contains a uh, calculation of test dose as well as how to apply uvr clinically so that is not covered because that is totally practical aspect 
okay so the students are requested to learn the same thing from your teacher okay so any question you can ask thank you